in the house. Let's get some music some love. Everybody be in the house of God. I have a good word for you today, and I want you to really um, enjoy this one. We had an amazing light night last night with yes. Reverend Easter Frazier. She ministered on freedom from rejection. I'm going to stay in the same vein this morning. Um, but if you can, please watch. Uh, please go to my Facebook page and watch the uh, video of that from last night. When you can really take time and listen to it, it'll really bless you. Um, if you can, like it and share it so your friends and family members can watch it. You never know who will be blessed by social media. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're going to go quickly to, to Psalm 23. Praise God. Psalm 23. Thank you, Lord. And I'm, excuse me, I'm staying in the same vein of uh, rejection, but my thought for today is he restores my soul yep. from rejection. Say, he restores my soul, he restores my soul from rejection. From rejection. We're going to go to King James Version, Psalm 23 which is a very familiar passage of scripture. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh -huh. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can we say amen? amen. I just want to lift up Psalm 23 uh, and verse 3, where it says, He restoreth my soul. Mm -hmm. And the word restore means to revive or quicken. Amen? amen. So the King James Version of Sabrina says, He restores my soul. Yes. The Amplified Bible says, He refreshes and restores my life, my soul, my life. The message translation says, you let me catch my breath. Sometimes we can be so overwhelmed with the things that we go through. Sometimes you just need to get into a place where you can just catch your breath. Say, catch your breath. Amen. The New Living Translation says, he renews my strength. Hallelujah. So we're going to speak today from the topic of, he restores my soul from rejection. Say, he restores my soul from rejection. The word rejection is the dismissing or refusing of a proposal, idea. To refuse, to accept, to consider, to submit, to take from, to take for some purpose or use. To refuse as lover or spouse, to cut off. And, and as we learned last night, as we learned now, everybody in here has, has said some type of rejection in their life. Whether it's from a husband, a wife, a friend, a classmate, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, your boo thing, whatever the case may be, we've all experienced some form or some type of rejection. Amen. Amen. Maybe we didn't, fit, we weren't, we didn't, we weren't good enough to be on the sports baseball team or the basketball team, but we've all set some form of rejection. Amen. Yes. Some synonyms for the word rejection is refusal, non-acceptance, declining, turning down, no, dismissal, spurning, abandonment. That's big. Abandonment is big. Yeah. For, uh, forsaking, uh, desertion, shutting out, exclusion, shunning, cold shouldering, ignoring, snubbing, brush off, a kick in the teeth. Amen? Wow. Yeah. Having feelings of rejection doesn't mean you're rejected. You can feel rejection, but not necessarily have been rejected or feel rejected. Just like you can you can fail at something or you can miss the mark and something doesn't make you a failure. That's right. Amen. Amen. You may gain two pounds, but it don't make you fat. Amen. Amen. I want to give y'all a little sidebar. I've been on my vegan eating for 12 days. Uh -huh. This is miraculous. <laughs> no meats and no dairy. It is good. Amen. I feel good. Amen. I don't know how I look, but I feel good. So God is good. So Rejection, and I'm very pa compassionate, and I'm very passionate about talking about rejection because I know how it feels to be rejected. Y'all have heard my testimony, but I found out at a very young age that I was adopted. And when I found it out at a very young age, it just left so many questions and so much. And even Easter, uh, Reverend Easter said last night, she said, when people have been rejected, it's such, it, it deals with so many layers yeah. of stuff. And then you wonder, you know, why you were adopted, where, where, who was your mother, who was your father. You walk around feeling in despair. You walk around feeling lonely. I just, you know, there were times when I was younger, I felt like taking my life. So it, it was just really a challenging time for me. And what happened as I began to, to know the Lord, not go to church, 
But as I begin to know the Lord and come in relationship with God, then God begins to deal with the layers in my life. And he began to deal with the, the, the rejection and the hurt and the pain. And it, it is years of layers. And I remember when I lived in Texas, I would ask people questions and I was trying to find out, you know, what I was doing because I felt even rejected in, in my family to a certain degree. And I was just trying to find out everything and try to find my roots out. And one thing that blessed me as I was doing my search to try to find my mom yes. uh, at one time was that they sent me some information from the state of New Jersey. And they said that at the time I was born, birth, that my mother was 16 uh -huh. and my dad was 15. And I remember the paper saying, which I still have, that, that my grandmother was a God-fearing woman. Uh -huh. And by her being a God-fearing woman, you know, she caused my mom to go to a center, a pregnancy center where they didn't abort me and get rid of me, that, you know, where uh, my grandmother didn't believe in abortion. So I just thank God for that because, you know, that's my story. You know what I'm saying? That's my story. And so many people nowadays for convenience or so people don't talk about them or for their reputation, but just say, well, I'll just get an abortion. Nobody will know about it. You know, it'll be okay. And if, if you've had that, that's okay. You know, God is, is a forgiving God. But I thank God for sparing my life because it's a part of my journey. And, 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 and I know that as we stay close to God and as we, you know, continue in God, that God will take the layers of our life and the things that we've gone through. When the word says in Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know, what do we know? That all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and for those that are called according to his purpose. So even in times of abandonment, in times of rejection, in times of hurt and pain, if we stick with God, God will take that test and give us a testimony. God will take the mess of our life and give us a message. So I encourage you today to not be ashamed of where you come from, not to be ashamed of what you're presently going through right now, because as you stick with God, God will use, he says he'll cause all things to work together for your good because you love God and because you're called according to his purpose. Anything that you're experiencing right now or going through right now, it's a part of your journey. That's right. That's why you never turn your nose up at anybody. You never put your mouth on people because you don't understand where people come from. You don't understand people's journey. You don't understand why people do what they do. Even a prostitute on the street, you don't put your mouth on them because maybe they didn't have a mother. Maybe they didn't have a father. And maybe they're looking for love in all the wrong places. This all of us have done this sometime in our life. Amen. Give God a praise. That was weak. I said, let's give God a praise. So I want to encourage you to, to never judge a person. Never look down on a person Amen. because you there, there, but behind the glory, there's a story. Yes. Amen. There's always a story. That's right. And I encourage you to share your story, Amen. whether you share it publicly or one on one, because your story will help somebody. All of you in here right now, it is March 24th, 2019. Yes. Whatever you're presently going through right now. I ain't talking about two days ago, two weeks ago, four years ago. Whatever you're going through right now, if you give it to God, God will use it and someone's life will be blessed. No matter how hurt, you, hurt you've been or down you've been. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. What does it mean to, re to reject someone? To refuse to accept, use, or believe something or someone. To reject someone also is to treat someone in a way that shows you do not feel affection for that person. As a child, she felt rejected by her mother. And, and, and we've all sensed rejection in, in our lives. But I, I tell you, if you get in touch with God, if you connect with the Lord and you connect with the Holy Spirit, God is the only one that can fill that void. Sex won't fill that void. Drugs won't fill that void. A man won't fill that void. A woman won't fill that void. Only God. There's a void on the inside of all of us that only God can fill. Give God a praise. And I know when my mother went home to be with the Lord in 2003, that was like a very, very hard time for me. It was very hard because my mother was the one that found me. I always say, Mom, you were the one that found me. But I, I thank God that even when she was on her sickbed in 2003, that I was able to go to her and say, Mom, thank you for adopting me. She said, well, why, why are you thanking me? I said, because I could have turned out anyway. I could have wound up anywhere. I could have been dead. I could, whatever. And I thank her. God put it in her spirit to come and find me. Amen. So, so we, thank, we, we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure I don't forget that this is good. Amen. Yes. And as I was rejected, I had many questions. Very empty. But I found my wholeness over a period of time. It was a process of healing, of overcoming low self-esteem, low self-worth. 
Amen. But I, I tell you today that God is a God who you're looking at a restored man right here. Amen. You're looking at somebody that God will restore you. Amen. And the restoration is, is, is we're still being made. Yes. But you got to be transparent. You have to be open with God and say, God, I, you got to, you got to, you got to help me. And people might not understand you, but you know, go to God. He understands your layers. He understands your drama. He understands you. Amen. I want to encourage you today to, to, to stick with God. One thing I want to say is God's word is medicine for our souls. Say God's word, God's word. is medicine, it's medicine for our souls. For our soul. We are a spirit. We, are. we have a soul. We live in a physical body. And our soul is comprised of our mind, will, and emotions. But as we take hold of the word of God, God's word brings healing. Yes. It brings wholeness. It brings forgiveness. And we got to stick with the things of God. I wrote here, consistency is the key to breakthrough. It's not what you do one time. It's what you do over and over. Staying in church. Staying in the presence of God. Staying prayed up. Staying fast. And staying close to God. The Bible says if you draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. So I just want to encourage you this morning that he will restore your soul. And that if you have someone you love, affirm them. You got quiet. Let me say it again. If you have someone you love, affirm them, validate them, tell them that you love love them. Whether it's your husband or wife, tell them that you love them. If it's your children, tell them that you love them. You love them and affirm them so the world doesn't. You love them and affirm them so some bozo outside won't don't try to get to your daughters and get to your sons. Amen. You affirm them. You validate them. You let them know that they are they're fearfully and wonderfully made. You let them know that they can do anything, that they, they, they're a good person. Validate them. Because let me tell you something. There's somebody out there that's ready to deceive you. There's somebody out there that's ready to, uh, to, to do you wrong. Amen? Amen. Your children. Affirm your children. If you got good friends in your life, tell your friends that you love them. Tell them that you accept them. Validate them. I hear somebody uh, lip syncing in the audience saying, I love you. I don't miss nothing. I see you out there. I ain't calling nobody out. If you have brothers and sisters in Christ, people are good to you. Tell them that you love them. Don't just think, oh, child, my husband, I've been with him 30 years. He know I love him. No. He needs to hear it. Mothers need to hear that they're loved. Fathers need to hear that they're loved. People need to hear that they're loved and accepted. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. I love this. Mother Teresa said, we have drugs for people with diseases like leprosy. But these drugs do not treat the main problem, uh -huh. the disease of being unwanted, rejected, loneliness, and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible kind of poverty. Yes. We'll read that again. Mother Teresa said, we have drugs for people with diseases like leprosy, but those drugs do not treat the main problem. Say the main problem. The, main the problem. disease of being unwanted, rejected. Loneliness. Let me tell you something. You could be in a marriage and feel lonely. The devil is a liar. It won't be me. But you can be in a relationship and feel lonely. You can be in a relationship and feel unwanted. Let me tell you something. I could feel. I could do bad by myself. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. The disease of being unwanted, rejected, loneliness, and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible kind of poverty. Hallelujah. This is good, ain't it? And, and, and we do we do these seminars. We do like last night our, our um, master class teaching because not just to say we have church and not just to get together, but we come so you can be helped. Amen. Sunday mornings is not just not to come to hear the word, but I come to challenge you and to change you so you can come into your rightful place. On, Let me tell you something. If you feel rejected and you feel low self esteem and low self worth, if you don't feel good about yourself, you ain't gonna move and do nothing for God. You ain't going to reach out and hug nobody. You're not going to love nobody. You're not going to extend yourself to anybody. Because you're going to feel like, oh my God, if I extend myself, they may reject me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And sometimes people will. But whatever I do, I want to do whatever I do is unto the Lord. If I hug you and you don't accept my hug, I do it as unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. I love this scripture. It says in Isaiah 53 and 3, it says that Jesus was despised and rejected. Let me tell you something. The Lord, the word says that he knows the feelings of our infirmities. Right. Yeah, that everything that we feel, Jesus felt it. He went through the same thing. Right. So everybody, even our Lord and Savior, knows what it feels like to be rejected. Yes, yes. 
We don't have a high priest that's not filled with the feelings of our infirmity. We don't serve a high God that doesn't know how we feel when we feel lonely and we feel by ourselves and we feel rejected. No, we have a Savior who walked in the same footsteps. That's right. Isaiah 53 and 3 says that Jesus was despised and rejected. Everybody say despised and rejected. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows. How many people have ever had sorrow in your life? He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We've all felt in some time of our life a time of grief. That's right. Amen. This is Amen. good. I'm being blessed myself. Amen. It says that we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Yes. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Isaiah 53 and 3. Uh, John 1 11 from the New Living says he came to his own people and they even rejected him. That's from the New Living Translation. 1 Samuel 8, 7 says, And the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubborn is as an iniquity and adultery, idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. Don't reject God's word. When you reject God's word, you reject God's help. When you reject God's word, yes. you reject God's help. Yes. That's really, wow. So all those people that want to get around God and be healed around God, you can't. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. Don't reject his word. That's right. And sometimes you may get a word that, 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 that kind of convicts you. That's good. We need, we need convicting words. Mm -hmm. We need words that are going to stretch us and challenge us. Hallelujah. It says he was rejected. He has rejected you from being king. That's 1 Samuel 15, 23. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The New King James Version says, But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you. If you reject God's word, he will reject you, because he and his word are one. Yes. Amen. 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 So good. Amen. John 1 and 10 from the New Living Translation says, He came into the very world, and he created, but the world didn't recognize him, or they didn't receive him. If people don't receive you, that's a form of rejection. Right. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The New Living Translation said he came to his own people and even they rejected him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So I just want to encourage you, no, nothing long, nothing deep, but just to allow the Holy Spirit to, 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 to deliver you from every spirit of rejection. Right. Right. To make you whole in your soul where there's nothing missing and nothing right. broken. Nothing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the, theme, the theme of Psalm 23 is that God always protects and provides. Say God always protects, God always protects. And, provides. and provides. And provides. The psalm relies on an extended metaphor of God as shepherd and the speaker as one of the sheep. With God as the shepherd, David says, I lack nothing. Through the psalm, he details the ways in which God provides, he leads, he guides, he refreshes. I want you to know today that God is the God that restores. Thank you, Lord. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you face, no matter what comes in your life. He's the, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you, we serve a God who's so awesome. God can restore you such in such a way. I'm not talking about a field, but I'm talking about uh, divine restoration. Yes. God can restore you, Sister Jackie, in such a way that even the thing that happened to you, it means nothing to you. Because God is such a God. Because when God does something, he does a complete work. Yes. In Genesis 1, when he said, it is finished, he didn't have to come back and recreate the world. When he said, it is finished, it's, it's complete. So when the Lord does the work, it's complete. It's finished. He ain't got to go back and tack up nothing. Y'all not saying nothing. He don't have to do nothing. I remember when my mother used to ask to do something. I can't say what she would say, but y'all have to pick it up in the spirit. Y'all already picked it up. Y'all some smart folks in here today. But I'm going to say it in the nice, safe Christian version. But when she asked to do she said, don't half do it. Y'all fill in the blanks. This is the doctor said, we know. Amen. So when the Lord does something, he doesn't half do it. God can restore you from a bad relationship and bring a person in your life that's phenomenal. And that person in your life will, will be so phenomenal that you forgot about all the drama and the tragedy that Bozo the Clown took you through. Y'all not saying nothing. Amen. I'm serious. That's the God of restoration. I'm not talking about Pastor Mark restoration. I'm talking about Jesus Christ restoring you. And he says in Joel, I will restore the years that the caterpillar and the pomodoro are taken away. He's the God of restoration. Say he's the God of restoration. And you got to get restoration in your spirit. Don't get how bad you hurt in your spirit. Get restoration in your spirit. Amen. 
And then don't be so hurt and damaged that when God sees you somebody, you do so hard you can't even receive the blessing. Wow. Ooh. You're trying to compare them to the last person. Y'all not saying nothing. Amen. Right, right. That's right. When God sends the blessing into your life, don't be so jacked up you can't receive it. But allow God to heal you to make you whole. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, God can heal you in such a way that every every bad memory, every bad thought, every bad feeling, I'm telling you, He, he can abolish it. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. No matter where you are today, whether you're lonely, whether you're single, whether you're in a challenging relationship. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, and I want you to get this in your spirit today, that God really is the God of restoration. Amen, amen, amen. Break it down. He'll restore years. He'll restore time. He'll give you double for your trouble. He'll turn your mourning into laughter. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. amen. We serve a real God. Let's give God a hand of praise. <laughs> Give God a hand of praise. Amen.